Shalom called out once. Here we are again. Another full circle has come around. Another reminder of the awesome and intense love that the creator of all has for his creation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. It is a gift from God, not of works, so that any man can boast. It is the work of grace through faith. For by grace are we saved through faith, through the belief that God will perform all that he promised he would do, and that is redeem his people from sin. We stand ready to begin this, the first, the beginning of the Hag festivals, the Pesach, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the memorial of our freedom and deliverance. We all have our independent anniversaries of personal salvation, but tonight is our corporate anniversary. The anniversary of all the Israel of God, the anniversary of our freedom, not only from the bondage of Egypt, but from the bondage of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the redemptive work of his son, Yahoshua. For Yah is salvation. The Passover is the feast of our sanctification, our deliverance, our redemption. And last but not least, it is the feast of praise. Every single feast of the Lord depends and begins with Passover. You can't have Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, also called Pentecost, without the Feast of Passover. There would have been no day of Pentecost because the Holy Spirit could not come unless Yahshua gave up the ghost. That's why he said it is expedient that he go away. It is good that he go away and we should rejoice for he goes to the Father and then he shall send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, which will lead us and guide us into all truth in his Torah. So there would be no outpouring of the Holy Ghost unless there was a Passover, the Passover sacrifice of the Lamb. We are to begin counting up to Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, the day after the Sabbath of Unleavened Bread, which is also called the High Sabbath spoken of in the New Testament. It is from the 16th of Nisan, the day after the Sabbath, in which we begin counting the Omer, the sheaf, for 49 days or seven complete weeks, plus one day, equaling 50, 50 days from Passover, which is the meaning of Pentecost, count 50. 50 days from Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And of course, you cannot have tabernacles, Sukkot, which means booths, unless you first have a Passover. For tabernacles is a memorial to remember that the Lord kept us while we dwelt in booths during the exodus from Egypt. How God preserved us until we reached the promised land. Everything ultimately points to Passover, our festival of freedom. Even the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, points back to the Passover. As it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15, Remember that thou was a slave in Egypt, and the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, hinting to the Lamb of God. Thus the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath. It's a reminder of our freedom. The Sabbath each week reminds us that we are free and the Lord is our salvation. This is why we keep the Shabbat. As Yahshua said, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. So as we prepare our hearts and minds, as we change the atmosphere from the chaos of this world and focus on the promise and glorious love of God, 
his mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. Let us remember to pray for those that may still be in bondage, still be in a type of Egypt and not realize it. Those that may still be under the bondage of traditions and the error of men that have infected the minds of many believers, teaching that this festival of redemption, the purpose of Yahshua coming to this earth is not for believers. It's for the Jews. We're supposed to be doing Easter and eating honey-baked ham. This is the biggest lie of the adversary. Even Yahshua said, do this Passover in remembrance of me. Even Paul said, let us keep the feast. And as often as we do it, we remember his death, his work of redemption until he comes. The feast of Passover is not fulfilled. Yahshua said it out of his own mouth. It will not be fulfilled until he comes and have it with us in his father's kingdom. In the meantime, we do what we are doing right now. We keep rehearsing for that great day. We know not when, but Yahshua did say, blessed is that man when his master returns and finds him doing. This is the watch night feast. This is the feast of expectation. This is the feast of faith. For you had to have faith to receive and apply the blood of the lamb. And as John the Immerser said, as he saw Yahshua coming, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. As Yahshua said, do this in remembrance of me. We do this feast in remembrance of Yahshua as he instructed us to. Easter has nothing to do with our Lord and Savior. That is heresy. That is golden calf idolatry. And God will not share his glory with anyone. I was saving that last cup, the fourth cup of praise for today, the 14th of Nisan, the day of the Lamb, the day he took our place. It was at three o'clock today, the 14th of Nisan in Jerusalem, when Yahshua gave up the ghost. And he told us we should rejoice. We should praise the Lord because he goes to the Father and he shall send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, our Helper, which leads and guides us until we reach the promise. No more chains, no more struggles, no more bondage. This is the fourth cup, the cup of praise. And what a day that will be. Like the psalmist said, when we see Yahshua, we will sing and shout the victory. For he alone is the object of our praise. Oh, if men would praise the Lord for all that he has done, he alone is worthy of all the praise. We lift that fourth cup of praise in advance to you, Abba. Welcome to Passover 2021 the festival of our freedom.